Well, Maureen and her husband Michael both recovered from coronavirus earlier this year and now her new legion of fans are calling for her to take over as the Prime Minister. I'm just glad that the British public have awakened from death. People think this is something new. Look, I've gone through uh, six uh, uh, pandemics and the only difference between this and the others is government can interference. I say, can I just say that we need for the government to get rid of the scientists because I didn't vote for a scientist. Scientists should go back to the universities and the laboratories. We need Boris to get people around him who know what needs to be done. And what needs to be done is not lockdown. This country, the national health, we've got the best national health in the world. But if we don't keep the economy stable, and well, we can't afford it, can we? Well, Maureen, I think it's as simple as that. What they would say is that the scientists look at the risk, and one of the things is why we've had the restrictions in place is to protect the NHS, isn't it? Otherwise, our hospitals, our NHS won't be able to cope. They'll be overloaded. So I know you're saying you're being sensible, excuse you're me. taking precautions. Excuse me, but, excuse yeah. me. There are more people dying of cancer, there's more people dying of heart attacks, there's more people dying of strokes, there's more people dying of flu than there is this. They keep publishing these figures about this coronavirus and the figures have been inflation because people have been going and having death certificates for other illnesses and they've written at the bottom COVID and when someone said but they didn't die of COVID, it's all right, it's just ridiculous. Well, listen, Maureen, listen, the British Maureen. people I know be you're fooled. not a fan of scientists, I can see that. But can I just bring one of our scientists who's very nice in? It's Dr. Sarah Jarvis. Uh, she's here this morning. What do you make of what Maureen is saying there? Because it is, it is what a lot of people feel. Yeah, and I've got a huge amount of sympathy for you, Maureen. I absolutely understand what happened in March with the first lockdown. We didn't know enough about this virus. I know that your husband has said he's lived through six pandemics. Unless you're both over 101, you've never lived through one like this because there's never been one which has killed anything like as many as this one has. I know you just like my great aunt Mabel, who was completely convinced that you know the youngsters there um, were, you know, they were a bit wet, and she was the one who was going to keep things going. The trouble is, your immune system hasn't read the memo about that. I know you say you had coronavirus. I don't know if you were tested. We won't know if you actually had it. It might have been something else. And although you've come out the other side, if that's what you had, the simple fact of the matter is you were 500 times more likely to get to Can die Can I say something to you now? You said, I've never lived through anything like this. I'll, I'll cast my mind back. I don't know whether you can remember. 1968, 100,000 people alone died in this country. And it will go the same as any other virus through the herd immunity syndrome. You're guessing because you don't know. You're inexperienced. Like, let's, and, let's, and let's what Sarah, I've got Sarah pick up on that one. Is I've got right. a lot more experience and seen a lot more. And That's right. Happened. My dad's, my dad's what, 94 and he doesn't me. believe I know anything either. But even he doesn't think he's ever lived through anything like no, this. And no, he's been a fighter I'm not pilot in the Korean War. You don't know anything. You don't know sufficient. You okay. don't know okay. sufficient. Okay. You've not experienced right. it. Michael, I think everybody has different experiences in this pandemic. I have a very particular one myself, which yeah. you may or may not be aware of, but your Maureen. energy is wonderful. It's infectious. I know you said you wouldn't be Prime Minister, but there's a lot of people calling for you to be Prime Minister, Maureen. So, uh, you know, there you go. You've got the support out there. Thanks both very much. Bye. <laughs> Lovely to chat to you. Lovely to chat to you. Well, I think we've all been told. And I think um, maybe we all feel in perky of four, yeah. don't we? I'm certainly sitting up very straight. Christine's in for the rain at 9 o'clock. Morning, Christine.